So prior to going full time, how many projects you said you have done? Yeah, uh, I mean class projects, I can't really count. Uh, intern projects, three um, or four technically. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I did a series of projects. So um, let's say some of our users, they might have some quite good technical background in their computer science. However, they haven't really tackled those larger projects yet. Um, do you have like an advice for them to get started? Yeah, um, I think it again, it's, it comes down to like picking a, a thing that you want to do and you want to accomplish like a broader goal. And even if you haven't necessarily built like those bigger projects, like I think there are a lot of like, there's a lot of like boilerplate code out there and like tutorials and stuff like that that kind of um, allow you to uh, kind of like let your creativity flow into like whatever medium you choose. So like if you're trying to build a website, you may not build the website exactly in the way that like, you know, the tutorial suggests or you may not, I don't know, build a back end like a, like a, a REST API in the same way that everybody else does. but. Um, as like you go beyond like the actual skeleton that's provided in the tutorial, I think like in that process you're building something uh, that's bigger than just like you know a small little confined thing. Um, For these projects, do you think um, the idea is pretty important or more about the execution? There's some things that I like cared about that I you know just pursued anyway, and there's some things that I like I've done or I did in the past. Um, that I had like small interest in, but I realized through that process of like diving in and you know trying to execute um, on a project like that. And I think that early on, especially when it comes to software engineering or uh, CS, we don't really know like exactly what we want to do until like it comes into our like comes to our face or something like that. I guess both both routes are viable. I would say. So let's say you're tackling a new project and you have a new technology um, to learn. Mm -hmm. What are your main resources or what are your go-tos to learn that new technology? So I'll go to like the, the user guys and the, the documentation. If it's uh, a new technology that's been around for a while, um, there are plenty of developer communities. Uh, Stack Overflow being probably the, the one that I look to the most. Um, and then like, you know, if it's like really new, you know, uh, developer forums on their website and or, you know, Reddit, you know, YouTube. There are just so many places to kind of uh, gain insights and resources for learning. Twitter, you know, kind of like any place where people are or there's a, like an established developer community. I feel like, yeah, some people are kind of like, um, I guess, hard asses and will try to like chastise you for not knowing something. Uh, but there, I feel like there's also a good group of people, uh, probably, and that's probably the majority who, you know, would help out someone who's, you know, in need, especially if they, you know, ask for it. So, yeah. The majority is good. The majority is good and, and helpful. And, and I think that, interestingly enough, I feel like software development community um, very much represents a very, like, kind of like universal concept of, like, collaboration in a sense, and like collectivism to kind of like build a better world. But I guess this better world is just, you know, very much like virtual, right? Whether it be like tooling or like, you know, projects in general. And yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty nice. How do you learn a specific technology? Do you take online courses or do you use textbook? I'm more so into online courses or like, you know, just YouTube playlists of like people kind of like going through like how they're doing it and like for my use case again like I'll tweak things I'm like uh, like uh, I guess a shout out like there was um, when I was learning iOS programming there was this guy on YouTube called I think let's build that app and like he just does like huge playlists of like oh how do you build YouTube on iOS from like the front end all the way to like like at least the thin back end that he builds or maybe not thin but like the back end that he builds uh in his in his in his video so i prefer videos and instructions to textbooks but like if necessary you know i'll dive into a textbook if needed now will you recommend these videos these kind of sources where you kind of go step by step to like completely new people 
or do you think they kind of need more like a solid foundation um, before they get into it? Yeah, I, I think that a foundation is important. However, I think that in the process of even doing some of this stuff, you do learn some very foundational principles because like you can't build anything with the foundation. And I, I think that, you know, for someone who may not know that much about CS, um, like just even, you know, in the process of building something like, oh, like what is a class? Like they're like, he's like, oh, like let me declare this class or something like that. Or let me instantiate this, this variable. And like that jargon, I think prompts people to kind of like seek out the foundation. What, what, where, and you know, obviously, like we, we think very rigidly. Like people think rigidly, right? Like I don't know, like if we're making an analogy, like heart surgery without like knowing like the fundamentals of the body. Uh, well, like CS doesn't work in that way. It's not like a life or death type of scenario, especially in like a self-contained sandbox. Like you can very much like learn how to build a website and then like concurrently learn the the foundations and then like meet in the middle um, if you so please. That's an interesting point. So you're saying um, it's more of a good environment where not only is it okay to sort of like fail or mess something up, it's kind of part of the process, the process as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, with anything that I feel like people care about doing, it's like, you have to be willing and ready to like kind of take an L, right? Like, uh, I'm gonna use basketball as an example. I'm terrible at basketball. <laughs> like, it's, it's embarrassing. But, you know, one thing that I do know is if you put up enough shots and you put up enough shots confidently, even your broken jumper, you may make a couple more shots that in, if you didn't. And I think like CS is kind of like that, is that you know, you have like kind of like unlimited tries to kind of like improve yourself um, and the resources are just so abundant and there's just, I guess, so many like virtual like courts around that you could kind of like choose where you want to, you know, shoot your shot and just keep on doing it until you're like, you know, I guess like the most proficient person at it or whatever, if that's even a thing. So now, what would you recommend um, people to do for networking and networking with other software engineers? Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know how big LinkedIn is in Japan. I think it probably is pretty big there. But LinkedIn, like, correct? Yeah, LinkedIn um, is, I guess, one arm. Twitter, Reddit, you know, like, do like uh, uh, r slash Swift, r slash Python, r slash web dev, or you know, follow topics on Twitter, right? Like I follow, I'm not like a, a machine learning, you know, aficionado, but, or a data science aficionado, but I have like some level of interest in the same way that they have like fitness influencers on Instagram, they have like kind of like, you know, thought influencers for like, you know, for CS and stuff like that. Don't underestimate just cold, cold emailing people, right? I mean, if they don't get back to you, I'm sure it's nothing personal, it's just that, oh, like, this person's probably riddled with emails and riddled with messages. Try the next person. I don't know if you're just looking to talk to CEOs. Try the next person who's a CEO. Let's just like see see what happens. Or who are CS students at, at your local university? They could probably give you some really good tips too. Um, I think like the world is pretty open um, for for like that type of networking. Um, and I think like a lot of people again are, are nice enough and willing to you know help someone who kind of like reaches out. What would you recommend? What are the stacks that you would recommend to those wanting to be a full stack engineer currently? I think I mentioned before like you know if you're into like back end engineering, Node.js. Um, I mean your front end stack I guess doesn't necessarily matter. I think super popular is like React or React Native, if you're trying to do mobile development, if you want to do native stuff, you could do uh, like iOS, Swift, um, Swift UI. Uh, if you're into Android, Java, uh, you can get into Kotlin and stuff like that. Angular for more web stuff. Like there's just so much of that type of stuff that's out there. So in terms of this, um, will you say for users to kind of more pick their language and what is available in their language and first just tackle in, go in, kind of get used to the diagram and then sort of shift? 
Yeah, yeah. If you're learning, if you're learning one thing, maybe look at look up the frameworks that fit your language that you're learning in. Like when I was learning Python, I learned Django because I was interested in front end development. But, but you know, a lot of like the most popular languages have like the most frameworks. JavaScript being probably the most popular language has yeah. a ton of frameworks. I'm pretty sure our users definitely got a lot of that. And are there any other final remarks you'd like to tell everybody? Are all of our folks from Japan? Yeah, just keep learning. Uh, and I mean, you'll get there. I'm, I'm still very much learning. I'm not anywhere near where I probably think I want to be, but um, you know, it's just all a process. Yeah, all right. Thanks a lot. Cool. Thanks.